video is going to show how to change the brushes in a vice blade motor or the Lawnbot robotic mower. There are two vice blade motors, uh, but they both use the same brush kit and the procedure is identical for each motor. Changing the brush kit in a Lombot blade motor of the Feist type is really not that hard. You need some simple tools, a safety pin, a hex nut driver of the appropriate size that would fit in these two screws, and some compressed air that you can purchase really at just about any store in uh, maybe the computer section. In this step, we're going to determine whether it's necessary to change the black wire on your old motor. Former uh, older lawn bots had a different connector style than the new brush kit. We're going to first demonstrate how you can figure this out. What you do is take the connectors off of your motor. Please pull on the connector, not on the wire and you can see that the two tabs which ultimately are inside the old brushes the old brush kit are identical in size now let's take a look at your new brush kit it comes with the connector as you can see let's take the new connector off again pull on the connector not on the wire Look carefully and notice that where the black wire connector was installed, there was a smaller tab than on the other side. That's how you can tell that it will be necessary to change the black wire because on the motor, the two tabs were the same size. We'll be installing the new brush kit in there and what you're going to find out is the old connector won't fit. That's why it's necessary to change the connector. And we're going to show you how to do that in the next step. In this step, I'm going to demonstrate how to get the old black wire out. So the first thing is to simply pull on the wire. And you see that the pin gets close to the sleeve. You need to make sure that the pin does not catch on the sleeve. As it is right there. So you just push it in and then pull it all the way out. There it is. It 
In this step, we're going to thread the wire through the new wire through the cable sleeve so that uh, the black wire will be protected. Simply stick it in carefully, and then slide the wire up the sleeve. Just take little pieces at a time, about half inch or quarter inch, and you'll be able to get it through. You might find it necessary to straighten the wire at times. Nothing wrong with that. Just keep going and eventually you'll get it. If you think this is too hard to do, that's no problem. You can always run the wire on the outside and attach it to the sleeve with some cable ties. Now we're very close to the end here. As you can see, the pin is starting to come out. When it finally comes out, you can gently pull it, and there you have it. You're going to need uh, about three inches pulled out, and then we're going to attach the connector. So here we're going to learn which side the pin goes into the connector. I'm showing the side with the big slot on top, but also the tiny slot inside the connector. Now, if you turn the connector 180 degrees, you see that they look identical. The wire will actually go in this way, but we need to make sure that when the big slot is on top and the tiny slot is on top, the pin goes in the left channel. Here's our connector pin and we're going to be putting it in the left channel. However, there's a trick to the whole thing because the connector pin is a metal tab that sticks out and that's what holds it in place. Now when we threaded the black wire through the sleeve the metal pin got a little bit flattened. So the first thing we're going to do is make that metal pin stand out a little bit. So I'm going to set the connector down make sure I don't forget which way it's going to go. Take my safety pin and I'm going to use the safety pin to gently pull out the metal pin, the metal tab, I should say. There. Might be hard to see in the video, but all I'm doing is sliding the safety pin under the small metal tab so that it sticks out just a little bit. That's what's going to hold this pin in place and you'll know if you didn't do it right because the pin won't stay in place once you put it in the connector. Okay, back to our connector. I've got the big channel on top, that's this, I've got the little channel on top, and I'm going to put the connector pin in from behind such that the tiny piece of metal that I pulled out with the safety pin is also on top. So here we go. And it goes in the left side. Here we go. Put it in. Now look, I'm giving it a little tug. It's not coming out. That means I did it right. If it comes out, you probably did not pull out the tiny metal tab enough and you need to do that step again. One of the first things you'll have to do is take the, the screws out of the motor. That's really easy if you have the right size hex nut driver. 
simply unscrew them. Kind of a long screw there. Then take the cap off. Just have to jiggle it a little bit. And that exposes the motor and the old brush housing and brushes. In this step, I'm going to demonstrate how to remove the old brushes. Here's the view of the underside of the cap. Now I'm turning it over, you can see the tabs. It's actually very easy to get out by simply pressing on the tabs. That's all there is to it. So now we're going to demonstrate how to clean the motor before installing the brushes. There's usually some debris that comes out of it, so you want to shake that into the garbage can and do this step over a garbage can. Now because the bolts were removed, the bottom part, as I'm pointing to with this, is actually loose, so I'm holding it with my finger. You definitely want to keep a hold on there. This is some dust remover or compressed air. You may have a different way of getting compressed air. That's just fine. But it will be kind of messy, so that's why I want to show it to you over a garbage can. Simply blow the compressed air in and notice the cloud of debris that's coming out. We're going to keep doing this until there's no more cloud of debris. Especially get the part that is the copper, as you can see, because that's where the brushes are going to make contact. That's the part that you really want to be clean. Probably good to get the rest of the dirt out first because it keeps blowing onto the copper part. But you can see it's pretty clean now. The Most of the cloud that I'm making is the compressed air itself. Much cleaner. Now we're going to demonstrate how to put in the new brush kit. We have our disassembled motor here. Remember that the bolts have been removed. Therefore, it's important to hold it at the bottom so that it doesn't fall out. I want to try and show you a couple things on the inside of this motor. The bolts actually go through the triangular shaped holders on the two sides, here and here. Also, there's a seam on the motor that will become important when we try to orient the brush kit. Now on the brush kit, I want to show you a few things. This is the top. This is the bottom. This circular ring is a piece of plastic that's actually holding in the two brushes. The two brushes are here, and there's a spring that pushes them towards the plastic ring. When we're finished assembling this, the plastic ring will be gone. It'll get pushed out, and the brushes will come in contact with this part of the motor, on the copper part where my kind of in, inside in there. So ultimately it 
kind of goes on like this just to give you a rough idea Another important detail to notice on the new brush kit is these capacitors. They look like they're kind of just hanging there, and actually they are. There's actually a reason for that. When the brush kit gets installed into the motor, those capacitor legs are going to come in contact with the motor housing. You definitely want to make sure that they do come in contact with it. So you have to pay attention to where those little legs are and uh, make sure that you don't accidentally break off the capacitor or bend it. Now it's important to try and orient the brush kit so that when it's assembled we'll be able to put the connectors on correctly because the black wire as you know fits on one side and not on the other side. The way to do that is you look inside for the little triangles you put the seam and or notch which is at the top of the seam a little bit towards the right you align the holes two where the bolts can fit through you align those with the two triangles and you keep the one that's smaller which will ultimately be for the black wire on the left now we're ready to assemble the brush kit onto the motor it's a little bit tricky because as I showed before there's springs that hold the brushes in place and the ring keeps the springs from popping the brushes out so in a single motion we're going to be pushing the brush kit onto the motor sh uh, shaft attempting to make the brushes make contact on this copper part in here it's important to continue to hold the motor from the bottom because the bolts are out and this bottom piece is not being held on so you want to hold that with your hand and remember that we need to be conscious of where our capacitors are because these two leads need to make contact with the case and we also need to make sure that the holes are aligned with the triangles as discussed earlier push the push the entire brush push the brush assembly down in a single motion allowing the ring to come out at the top as you're pushing it in Now you can see that we have successfully gotten the brush kit onto the motor. The brushes are now making contact with the metal. If you turn it slightly, you can, you can actually see them making contact with the copper. A little hard to see, but there it is, inside that little crack. and this is the plastic ring that we were talking about that really its only purpose is to hold the brushes in place while you're installing it so this ring actually gets discarded now it's a little easier to see the the brushes making contact 
with the metal maybe not on the video but when you're doing it yourself you'll be able to see it a few more details is of course I'm always holding this together because if I don't the bottom is going to fall out and there'll be a big mess and could damage the motor so you really want to be careful to hold that also if I hold this at just the right angle you see that white that's through there on that one hole and then again on that hole that's telling us that we have the brush kit properly aligned however if after you have it on there you discover that you can't see through it you can turn this rotate it to align the holes properly also remember about the capacitors that they have to come in contact with the housing that should happen when the cap goes on the cap will make contact with the capacitor and also the housing and in addition there's a notch here that should be roughly centered between these two protrusions on the plastic part of the brush kit but on the cap you can see there's a something sticking out that's going to go into that notch once the cap gets assembled so it goes on this way Now we're going to get the cap uh, onto the motor after the um, brush kit was installed. First you just align it and it's really as easy as pushing down and jiggling a little bit. Then insert the bolts. get them started and then use the uh, hex driver to get it on there tight give it a little leverage with the long side tighten well Of course, be careful not to strip the screw head or the screw itself. And if you're not strong enough to get it really tight, definitely ask for some help because obviously the motor experiences an awful lot of vibration and you really don't want those screws vibrating loose. Okay, and then the final step course is connecting the connectors and thankfully due to our new connector here we can't put it on wrong the small one goes here and the large one goes here let me just check something here I want to make sure yeah obviously you're not going to put it on that way so it goes on like that and voila we're all done one final tip is before installing the whole motor into the Lombot you're going to want to connect these connectors to the motherboard and then run the blade motor test let it run for uh, a good amount of time because you want the brushes to get kind of shaped to that uh, round part, I guess it's called a commutator, the copper part that I showed you earlier. Um, the brushes will get us a, a curve to them. 
So you want to run it in the blade motor test, just connect it to the lawn bot, but out of the lawn bot, and uh, you know run it for a good amount of time until you feel confident that that the uh, the motor you know is working. Maybe it gets a little, you can feel a little heat from it getting warm. Um, probably be best to put it in a vice grip rather than hold it with your hand and uh, you know let it run for a while and then when you're confident in it then it then it would be time to you know, reinstall it back into your lawn bot so thanks I hope you found the video informative and uh, we appreciate that you were watching have a great day In this segment, I'm going to use a broken brush kit to show you how to get the brushes back in if they accidentally come out while you're uh, trying to install them in the motor. So just to help you understand, the there are some springs here and here. There's supposed to be a brush attached to this wire. This is a broken brush kit, so it's missing. And this is all we have, so I apologize it's not a, a good brush kit that we're using. But what you're going to want to do is get those brushes back in so that the springs will be pushing on them with sufficient force. So I'm going to try and demonstrate that now. So you can see it just sort of slides right in the slot right there. But what can make it challenging to get back in is oftentimes they won't They'll just want to pop right back out. See how it's kind of springy like that? And then you'll have this other one on the other side, and it's trying to pop out too. So it can be a little difficult, and you might want to use a screwdriver, a flathead, or get some help from someone so that you can kind of push them both in and then get this ring back in place. You can you put that in from the opposite side. See how it tries to hold the brushes in place? And then you just push it through. Then you can start the procedure again. So you'll have one brush in there and one in there. But as I mentioned this is a broken one so here in this one you just see the spring that's that would be pushing the brush out. <laughs>